Hey, how you doing today, guys? Um, let me preheat my pan. Uh, cause you know every time you cook with a stainless steel pan, you gotta have it hot. So, um, somewhere up in here, I'm gonna put a, a video of from when I fried an egg. So, that'll give you a little bit more explanation on it. I'm gonna be making my, uh, my fish, my, well, it's really my salmon crackers that I love. The ones with the olives and everything on it. Um, get my pan heated up. Let me get my, uh, my salmon unwrapped here. There we go. Nice big chunk of salmon. I'm just put this over here for now. So, first thing I do is I like to check to make sure that there are no bones. You normally find them right along the center line. Check the ends. All right, we look good. Got to rinse my hands off, wash them up. Don't want to cross contaminate anything. So what we're going to be using today are just basic Ritz crackers. Um, I like them, they're buttery. You know, theme of the channel is butter. Um, my Kalamata olives, I buy the ones that are already, um, they're already have, you can say it, they're already cut for me because I'm lazy. So we got that. And then I'm going to have three different kinds of cheeses today. First one is going to be a garlic herb cheese. The other one is a horseradish cheese and also a double smoked cheese. They're all cheddars. So I prepped them all so that way, uh, it would go a little bit faster at the end so you guys didn't have to sit there and watch me cut cheese. We want to make sure our pan gets nice and hot. We have to season everything really well. I'm a big fan of just salt and pepper on my salmon. A lot of people like to put garlic and stuff in it. If I was going to be putting it over like a risotto or noodles or something like that I would but just to eat plain I'm perfectly fine with um, just salt and pepper um, later on you'll notice that I'm going to be taking this from the stovetop putting it in the oven I have my oven preheated at 425 I'm running my pan at medium maybe a little over medium um, so once everything gets warmed up we can get started um, the temperature that you're going to want to cook at is almost to the burning point of the butter but not above that because then you'll get a burnt taste in your fish so first thing i'm going to do i'm going to take just a little piece of butter to see how warm my pan is eh, not ready yet so the things we're going to need is going to be a fish flipper um or a fish spatula whatever you call i, I use this for everything um, a big spoon because we're going to be basting almost constantly uh, with butter. Once again, butter. It's my friend. You already seen the crackers and the cheese, the salmon. And then I also drizzle some extra virgin olive oil on it. I like the first cold press. It's a little bit fruitier. It's, it's just the one that I prefer. You can get any olive oil. They'll all work fine for you. So, all right. We're looking pretty good. I'll turn the heat up just a hair. Because you want to make sure when you drop this piece of fish in that it's going to brown right away. Almost burn the bottom of the fish so that way you can get, in, um, get the skin really crispy. I don't eat the skin myself. I just break up the fish. So, as you can see, we're going to use a lot of butter. Turn it down a little bit, got the pan a little too hot. Make sure the whole pan gets covered in butter. Now, take our big, 
chunk of fish and throw it right on top that the little bit of butter that's um, not melted yet. I do that because that creates a little bit of a pocket under there and it helps keep it uh, moist underneath because if not it'll end up sticking to your pan. Let me wash my hands up real quick. If you notice that your pan temperature goes down as you're cooking, just go ahead and turn it up because you are putting a big piece of cold fish into a hot pan so the temperature will drop. That's one of the reasons you want to make sure you get it plenty hot enough in the beginning. Now we wait for a little bit because we want to get that nice crust on the bottom. What I like to do, if you can see right down here on the end, I like to get it a little bit white. You'll see how it's cooking. There's a thin line now. I let it get a little bit more cooked through before I start the base because right now it's releasing all the oils of the fish. So I'm going to be using the fresh oils that are coming out of the fish, the butter, and it's all going to help me base it for later. Right before I start basting, I'm going to add more butter because I want to make sure I'm going to have plenty enough to get you know, nice big ladles of butter so I can cover the whole fish. So I'm not doing little portions every time that I try and ladle more on. And you can see the piece of fish is nice and loose in there. I normally don't flip mine. Just want to get some butter underneath here. Because we got to cook all the sides. Let it go for a little swim. That allows the butter to hit the sides of the pan and it will help cook the edges of the uh, fish. I, I apologize, my dog wants to eat. So now we're going to add more butter. As awkwardly as possible. What I'm going to do at this point is just tilt the pan, get all this hot butter, and we're just going to baste it. You can see over here on this side how it's starting to get white. I'm actually cooking the top with the hot butter. You can see right over here how it's starting to cook through pretty good. I'm going to turn the pan up just a hair. Got to make sure you have enough butter in here. Put it down, let it cook a little bit more, warm up the butter again because we are basting it over cold fish. You can see right here through the middle where the butter was sitting in the little cavities of the fish, you can see how that's really starting to cook. We want to cook this probably about halfway through and then we're going to throw it in the oven for a few minutes. Um, and then when it comes out, we'll be able to uh, start plating and uh, I'll be able to have lunch. Now you can see how much more liquid I have in here for basting. It's because it's releasing all the oils out of the fish. All these nice little white lines is all the fat. It's kind of like the marbling for the fish. And this is just going to continue to give it more and more flavor. I mean, who doesn't like butter, right? Once I get the top almost completely white like this and the side is about halfway white, that's when we're going to pop it in the oven. The time frame is different for every piece of fish you do. 
It depends on how thick, how big. That's why I don't bake because I'm not good at uh, measurements and everything. I just cook it till it's done and looks good for me. And you can see we're still not stuck to the pan, which is good. Move it around a little bit, make sure that the fish gets on another nice hot spot of the pan. And we continue to baste. Every once in a while putting it back down so that we can get the butter nice and hot again. And I think we're just about ready. Probably baste it one more time and throw it in the oven. Yeah, you can see all this all this nice oil that came out of the fish and all this butter. This is going to be great. You got to get this corner down here. You can see how it's still a little bit pink. Now this is where we go in the oven. We go in the oven until it's completely white all the way, not white all the way through, but cooked all the way through. And that should probably only take about another five minutes or so. Going to turn off the burner, give it a little swirl around, and right in the oven. Be careful not to burn yourself, and I'll be back when it's done. All right, welcome back, guys. Um, I'm going to start building all the crackers uh, because it's crackers. Then I put cheese, then I put the warm fish on top. Kind of melts the cheese a little bit, gets it soft, and then on top goes the olive, and then a little bit of olive oil. Um, one thing that I do like that my wife did for me a couple times was she put avocado on it. That was also really good. I enjoyed that. So if you want to try and make something unhealthy healthy, <laughs> throw some avocado on there. So we're just going to start by putting one piece of cheese down. They only get one piece of cheese. I normally make the pieces of cheese a little bit smaller, but this time I figured I would splurge, you know, get the new year started off right. Um, right now I'm putting down the uh, garlic and herb, and now I'm going to put down the horseradish. I love horseradish cheese. I don't know anybody else that eats it. If you like it, leave a comment below. You know, let me know what kind of cheese you like the best. And now since I was a little short on my double smoked cheese, I'm going to use whatever I had left just because I, I love it. Who doesn't like smoked cheese? Well, look at that. We got a bonus. There we go. Now we got all of our cheese down on top of our crackers. Move the spatula. Yep, I'd say it's done. Don't forget, put your mitt on. If you don't put your mitt on, you're going to have a very unhappy day. Reach in, grab our hot handle. There you go. I want to get a uh, little bit of a base on it before I take it out and put it over on the cutting board. As you guys can tell, I'm definitely not left-handed. Get all that off there. This can go right in the sink. Now, here we go. Let's, let's see how this works. Once again, I'm not left-handed. Take out our nice big piece of fish. Put it on our cutting board. 
Oh, oop. Don't leave any fish behind. Slide that off to the side so I don't burn myself because I'm good at that. Spatula goes in the sink. Now what I do is I'll just use a fork and I just take the fish and I pile it on top. You can see I just break off the, uh, I just flake it off. Depending on how you like your fish, you can have it either way. You can have it a little bit on the less cooked side, as long as you have a sushi grade piece of fish. Or, I kind of like mine fully cooked, um, even though I do love sushi. Down here where you can see that they're V-shaped, I'm just going to make my life easier. Then I'm just going to pull it off. You see how it releases real nice from that skin? It's because we got a nice crispy skin on the bottom. And we're just going to keep, you know, where it naturally breaks. Like I was saying before, the, um, that, the nice white lines that were in there. That's, um, that's where all these break, that little fat line. It'll end up breaking off right there because that's where it, um, that's where it created a weak point. So I'll pull this out, get some nice, nice pieces out of it. You can see all that nice, whoops, <laughs> get back on my cutting board. It's still hot. You can see all that nice fat in there. I'm going to eat that. I love it. And you can see you can just pull off all these nice big chunks. Yeah. Get on my fork. Then you just keep going till you're done. When I get in the middle and the and it starts to break up on me, because I'm not that gentle. Once again, that's why I don't bake. I'll just break it in half and throw a chunk on there. Normally, the last couple crackers that I have are just all the little pieces that are on there. And I'm like I'll take the shredded stuff, throw that right on top of a cracker. And you can see how it just breaks off in nice layers. Got to get all these finished up because we got to put my favorite part on, the olive. Who doesn't love olives? Let me know what you guys like. What kind of olives do you like? I like all kinds. For this, I'm a big fan of the Kalamata. So, hmm. So, I'm just going to take an olive, put one olive right on the top. This is why I took the lazy way, so I didn't have to worry about cutting them. Hey, you get back on there. You can put as much fish on that you want. I've even had these with white fish. I, I prefer the salmon. Then once we get all the olives on all of them, next thing we do... We drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil. So I'm going to put my thumb over the pour spout because I don't want that much oil. This way I can get a nice little drizzle. I'll do them all. I'll go back and I'll get the olives on the rest of them later. There you go. Let me rinse everything off my hand. 
and then I would continue to build them. You can make a lot of these if you have a party. So let me know what you guys think and you know, enjoy. I hope you guys make it yourself. So at this point, you know, hopefully uh, you guys will like this. You'll give me a thumbs up. Hopefully you'll subscribe if this is your first time here. Um, anybody who follows me on Instagram sees that I make these all the time. I have probably three or four different pictures of them up already. So, guys, have a nice day. And just remember, any day that you get to learn something, to me, that is a day that is well worth it. Everybody should be able to learn something every day. So, just remember, any knowledge that you gain will be your edge every day. Thanks, guys.